जय राधे जय राधे राधे जय राधे जय श्री राधे जय राधे जय राधे राधे जय कृष्णा जय कृष्णा कृष्णा जय कृष्णा जय श्री कृष्णा श्यामा गौरी नेत्य किशोरी प्रीतम जोरी श्री राधे रसिक रसीलो चैल छो गुण गर दिलो श्री कृष्ण रस विहारिणी रस विस्तारिणी पिय उधारिणी श्री राधे नव नव रंगे नवल त्रिभंगे श्याम सुअंगी श्री कृष्ण जय राधे जय राधे राधे जय राधे जय श्री राधे जय राधे जय कृष्ण जय कृष्ण कृष्ण जय कृष्ण जय श्री कृष्ण प्राण प्रियारी रूप बुजारे अति सुकुमारी श्री राधे मैन मनोहर महामोद कर सुंदर वर तर श्री कृष्ण शोभा सैने मो भावैने को किल बायने श्री राधे किरतिवंता काविनी कांता श्री भगवंता श्री कृष्ण जय राधे जय राधे राधे जय राधे जय श्री राधे जय राधे जय कृष्ण जय कृष्ण कृष्ण जय कृष्ण जय श्री कृष्ण चंदावदनी कुंदारदनी शोभा सदनी श्री राधे परम उदारा प्रभा पारा अति सुकुमारा श्री कृष्ण हंसा गविनी राज तिरवनी क्रीडा कवनी श्री राधे रूप 
ಪರಸಾಲನ ವಿಶಾಲ ಪರಮ ಕೃಪಾಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಂಚನ ಬೇಲಿ ರತಿರಸರೇಲಿ ಅತಿ ಅಲಬೇಲಿ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧೆ ಸವ ಸುಖ ಸಾಗರ ಸವ ಗುಣಾಗರ ರೂಪ ಉಜಾಗರ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ರವಣೀರಂ ಯಾತರ ತರತಂ ಯಾ ಗುಣ ಅಗಂ ಯಾ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧೆ ಧಾಮ ನಿವಾಸಿ ಪ್ರಭಾ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿ ಸಹಜ ಸುಹಾಸಿ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶಕ್ತ ಹ್ಲಾದಿನಿ ಅತಿ ಪ್ರಿಯವಾದಿನಿ ಉರವನ್ ಮಾದಿನಿ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧೆ ಅಂಗಾಂಗ ತೌನಾ ಸರಸ ಸಲೌನಾ ಸುಭಗ ಸುತೌನಾ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಾಧಾರಾಮಿನಿ ಗುಣಾಭಿರಾಮಿನಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧೆ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ವೃಂದಾವನ ಧಾಮ
जय राधे जय कृष्ण जय वृंदावन श्री गोविंद गोपीनाथ मदन मोहन जय वृंदावन श्री गोविंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नित्य गौर हरि बोल जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यनंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौरा भक्त बृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यनंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त बृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त बृंद गौर भक्त बृंद गौर भक्त बृंद हरिगोपावना हरिनाम संकीर्तन की ओम ज्ञान थिमिरंद ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षु वन्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे वाचाकलतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर द चैतन्य सत्यामृत मध्य लीला डिस्कसिंग कॉन्वर्सेशन बिटवीन रामानंद राय एंड लॉर्ड चैतन्य What was the verse number yesterday? We finished with twenty-five. Yeah, twenty-five. We finished. Twenty-five. Okay. So, what I was planning to do do today, you know, we have entered a very esoteric and very exalted spiritual topic called the Kanta Prem, which actually is the very vital aspect of this chapter. conversation between lord chaitanya and ramanand rai so kanta prem what we are entering into this is a very advanced topic and in that the radharani is love for krishna is even more advanced topic <laughs> so these two topics are there so we'll recite a few verses and then we will discuss something <laughs> उसोज 
the I think one twenty seven. Yeah, one one six. Up to one one six. So Kanta Prem topic is seventy nine to hundred and sixteen. Huh? That is the section. So here in this section, there are many many subsections here. If you see, he talks about conjugal attachment for Krishna by the gopis, the exalted position of conjugal love for Krishna, the Madhurya Bhakti itself is explained in eighty two to eighty eight. Then eighty nine to ninety five, the exalted position of the gopis. So that is one section, and then ninety eight to hundred and sixteen, that is Radha Radha Rab Prema, glory of Shri Radha and his love. Mm-hmm. And then up to yeah, that is up to 116. So three sections are there, as I told you. Mm-hmm. One is about the exalted position of Madhurya Bhakti for Krishna in general. Then the exalted position of Gopis. Then exalted position of Radha Rani. So before we proceed, because from 98 onwards Radha's prem is starting. So before that, I wanted to. Uh, explain the one last verse yesterday we were reciting, which said that you know, Krishna and all the gopis, this combination is very beautiful. Mm-hmm. He says that when uh, Krishna is in the midst of the gopis, he shines out very beautifully. That was one point made, and then Krishna also told the gopis that you are remembrance for me. Mayi bhaktir hi bhutana amritatva yakalpate. She told the gopis that you are all very fortunate to have such devotion to me. And mayi bhakti hi bhutana mamritatvai kalpate. If living entities become attracted to me, attached to me, because I am the whole, and all living entities are my parts and parcels, when the part becomes attracted to the whole, then it is like watering the root of a tree, or it is like putting food in the belly. If you water the root of the tree, then the entire tree gets nourished. If you put food in the belly, then the entire body gets nourished. So, if a part becomes attracted not to another part, but the part becomes attracted to whole, then it's very wonderful situation. Because our one hand cannot help another hand. Imagine if this hand has a ladoo, this hand has a Mysore Pak. They can't help each other. This hand cannot say, "Let us both share half ladoo, half my surpak, and eat and enjoy." No, they can't sub- enjoy independent of the belly, hmm, unless they give the food to the belly. Similarly, without uh, becoming a devotee of Krishna, one living entity actually cannot do any great good to another living entity without bringing, putting God in the center. Hmm. So, Krishna is telling that even anyone who becomes my devotee is fortunate, hmm. but then. Hmm, if anyone has madhuri aprem that is considered the topmost why it is topmost will become clear in our discussion today so we will surely read out 95 to 116 and complete this section today but before we complete this section we are going to discuss a little bit so here is a small ppt here because Krishna's Rasa dance is one of the most misunderstood uh, subjects. Uh, people, you know, as soon as they hear about it, they become interested uh, more. Oh, really? God also is dancing with young, beautiful girls. So then they feel that why not we also do it? And they feel it's very important to follow this. Because God is showing by example, we have to follow it. Actually, such facts, where do you get from? This we get from Srimad Bhagavatam. So, if we are accepting, if anybody is accepting the f- facts from Bhagavatam, like the Rasa dance, they also should accept all the other facts given in the same book. The Srimad Bhagavatam says, Krishna danced with gopis when he was only an eight-year-old boy. Some of the gopis were even ten or eleven or twelve. And some of them were married also and some of them had children also. And he was only eight, year, eight years old. But in the age of seven, he lifted Govardhan Hill. And when he was five years and uh, seven months, almost five and a half years, he danced on Kaliya. So in this way, 
people who want to know about rasa dance how we can dance like krishna they also should not forget um, that there are many other things said about krishna in the same shrimad bhagavatam uh, that the great uh, extraordinary feats or extraordinary activities that lord krishna did he swallowed the forest fire uh, in the vishrupa darshanam he showed in the battlefield of kurukshetra in the mrida bakshana leela of eating mud krishna opened his mouth and showed to mother yashoda uh, you know the whole universe within his belly so anyone who says if uh, if god can dance with so many women then why can't i dance yes sir you can also dance but you have to do those things also so therefore we are going to briefly discuss about this this will be only a small part read it krishna krishna is rishikesh and adokshaj these yeah. two particular words have been used by shukdev goswami in this instance rishikesh is the super soul and adokshaj is the supreme personality of godhead transcendental to the material nature just to show favor to the ordinary living entities out of his causeless mercy he appears as he is Unfortunately foolish persons mistake him to be an ordinary person and so they become eligible to go to hell <laughs> yeah like here you see vaman deva when krishna comes as vaman dev you know he is uh, cracking the shell of the universe and bringing the viraja river inside and then from there comes ganga devi as you see here huh? that's how ganga so the water that touched his krishna's feet became ganga became so holy waters for all time to come she is eradicating the sinful reactions of the living entities so you can imagine if the dust of krishna's feet can eradicate sin how can he ever engage in sinful activities think about it the ganga coming from his feet is eradicating sinful reactions of millions of living entities all over the universe how can he be sinful in doing something irreligious like that shukadev goswami asked and all not only that is called adoksha jamin is beyond the range of our mundane senses because our uh, sense perception always is fallacious we superficially see activities and then we come to some wrong conclusions therefore it is very important to deeply understand the subject and rishikesh means he is the master of all our senses our senses are all functioning because he has allowed uh, us to have the gift of our senses if krishna Uh, uh creates the surya then we all can see without surya no living being can see mm-hmm. similarly krishna has created earth water fire air ether all these things uh, in this world he creates he maintains he annihilates uh, so he is the master of the senses which means all our senses are supposed to be used for his service mm-hmm. like with eyes we should see his beauty with hand we should cleanse his temple with mouth we should speak his glories uh, with ears we should hear his katha or kirtan ha huh? yeah with uh, nose we should smell the flower offered to him like that hmm? that is the rishikesh so the shastra say that he actually deserves the worship of all living beings in the world all millions and millions of living beings so how can he be ordinary person how can his activities be like uh, ordinary activities of a boy or a girl hmm? yeah and this is what i was telling you proper rights in krishna book read it what proper says krishna was just 8 years old it, it appears. appears that krishna enjoyed the rasa dance with the gopis when he was 8 years old at that time many of the gopis were married they continued to hope that krishna would be their husband their attitude toward krishna was that of a paramar love therefore the loving affairs of krishna with the gopis are called parakya ras actually krishna is the husband of everyone yeah actually Uh, the living entities who claim to be uh, husband wife or parents and children uh, they actually have a, a, a superficial relationship for example a man and woman get married and they beget a child and they say this is our son or our daughter but think about it uh, very deeply and like if i take a pen and i make a signature does the signature belong to the pen or it belongs to the paper if you think deeply it neither belongs to pen nor belongs to paper it belongs to the person who is holding the pen and signing which is myself pradesham das in the same manner we find the father is injecting semen into the uh, i mean mother's womb 
So husband, wife, and they unite like that, and the child is born. And who has made this facility? Krishna is actually using the father and mother as an instrument to bring the jiva to this world. Actually, the jiva is whose son? Aham bija pradhapita. Krishna is saying that I am the uh, I am actual father, but the living entities imagine themselves to be mother or father. He says he is actually mother and father of your mother and father also, and your grandmother and grandfather also. Therefore, if you go up, 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 you know, father, 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 father of all fathers is Krishna. Hmm? So, but there is a superficial relationship in this lifetime. For example, say there is father, mother, and son. In the next next lifetime, the father and son can become brother and brother also, hmm? or they can become husband, wife also. <laughs> the jiva keeps on changing from one body to another. Hmm? This is not a permanent relationship. In the same manner. The jivas are all called prakriti. Hmm? Prakriti means female, hmm? and purusha means male. So Krishna is actually called uh, uh, purusha, and we are called prakriti. Hmm? That means millions of living entities, you know, whatever uh, external dress they may be wearing. Like sometimes girls also wear pant shirt, correct? That doesn't make them purusha. Hmm? Sometimes a girl wears sari, sometimes she wears pant shirt, but bo- both of them are considered to be. Girls only. They are not similarly. The one jiva is wearing male dress. Another jiva is wearing a, a female body. Another jiva is wearing a dog's body, cat's body. But all are females ultimately. Why? Because they are prakriti. Prakriti means predominated, and purusha means predominator. And prakriti means servant, and purusha means master. And prakriti means enjoyed. Purusha means enjoyer. For example, the food kept in front of you is called enjoyed, and you are eating the food, the consumer of food and relisher of the food. You are enjoyer, correct? That's why we see in the same manner the jivas are supposed to be enjoyed by Krishna, uh, and uh, Krishna is the enjoyer. That means actually by our service to him, uh, uh, like a like a wife is serving the husband, then husband is pleased, then wife and husband both are pleased. Uh, Similarly, the children bring good rank from the school. Parents are pleased, and the child is also pleased. Mm-hmm. Similarly, a citizen does some good work for the country. They give him some Padma Bhushan award. Then the citizen is pleased. Then the prime minister is pleased also. Mm-hmm. You are working for a company. You try to please the boss. Mm-hmm. They become very pleased with you, and they give you a promotion. Mm-hmm. Then the boss is pleased, and they give you a promotion. Company is flourishing, and you are also happy that you are recognized, and they gave you promotion. In the same manner, <coughs> Krishna is the Swami Master, and we are His servant. So when we serve Him, then we become happy, and He becomes happy. So that is actually the relationship. But in this world, what happens? We artificially assume the role of enjoyers in this world. Actually, no leader is a true leader. Although I told you many names now, you know, the father or the company boss or the prime minister of a country or all these people. They appear to be enjoyer, and you appear to be enjoyed. But actually, nobody is enjoyer in this world. They are all people who come, stay for a while, and go away. They don't stay. The only permanent, everlasting uh, enjoyer is Krishna, Lord Vasudeva. This is a deep teaching given by Jada Bharata to Rahuguna. He told Rahuguna, "My dear king, you are a king, but you are not permanently a king forever. Today you are king. I am your, uh, you know, palanquin carrier. Tomorrow I may be king." Sitting in the top, and you may be carrying my palanquin," he said, "because master-servant roles keep changing in this world. But when it comes to Krishna, he is the eternal master, Vasudeva, huh? everlasting master, imperishable master, permanent master, master of masters, huh? like that. So therefore, one should know this. He is the husband of everyone, and he was only eight years old when he was performing this dance. Yeah." And then Gopi's bodies were spiritual. That is mentioned in the Shrimad Bhagavatam. The husband saw the material bodies by their side. Prabhupada writes in Krishna book, read it. Another important point is that none of the gopis who danced with Krishna were in their material bodies. They danced with Krishna in their spiritual bodies. All their husbands thought that their wives were sleeping by their sides. The bodies of the gopis, which were their husbands, were lying in bed, but the spiritual parts and parcels of Krishna were dancing with him. Krishna is the supreme person, the whole spirit. and he danced with the spiritual bodies of the gopis there is therefore no reason to accuse krishna in any way yeah 
So, in this way, Prabhupada writes in the Krishna book, it's there in Srimad Bhagavatam also, you can see the verses. He talks about gopis going in their spiritual bodies and dancing with Krishna, which means it's a spiritual dance. Rasa dance is not an ordinary dance. And highly qualified, pure souls are only allowed to enter huh? as a dance. Yeah, teji yasam, na doshaya. Huh? No one can imitate great souls. For example, you see, Lord Shiva, huh? he drank halahal and his throat became bluish huh? for the welfare of all the suffering living entities. And you take the example of Rahu. He drank Amrit and his neck was cut. Huh? And uh, so Rahu was defeated even though he ate Amrit. Huh? So the, uh, therefore it is said, uh, even Amrit became uh, a producer of disrepute for Rahu, huh? drinking Amrit. He couldn't live a long life, rather he was cut, his neck was cut, isn't it? On the other hand, Shiva, he drank poison and for all time to come he became glorious. Compare these two fellows, two personalities. So one is drinking Amrita and becoming inglorious because of opposing God's plan. And Shiva is drinking Halahal and is becoming glorious for all time to come. So one should know that one cannot imitate great souls like Shiva. In the same manner, one cannot imitate great personalities like the Supreme Lord, Krishna. That's the point made here. Read further. If one wants to imitate Krishna, then one should imitate everything. First dance on thousand hooded snake Kaliya at the age of five years and lift Govardhan Hill at the age of seven years and then aspire for doing Rasa dance. Yeah, so Prabhupada would say this. <laughs> yeah, Here's the next one. Carrying Krishna in their hearts, his devotees wander all over the globe without any contamination. Krishna is the supreme purifier and can't get polluted or do any polluting activities. Neither can he do any polluting activities, nor can anyone pollute him. Huh? Somebody may say, actually Krishna was very pure, but unfortunately the uh, gopis polluted him by dancing with him. Somebody may say, no, nobody can pollute him. He is like the sun. The sun actually can uh, evaporate urine all over the globe hmm? and the sun will not get contaminated. Sun will always remain pure. In fact, uh, in the Bhakti Samrata Sindhu, there are two words used, Kama and Kama Praya. These two words are used. Kama is actually why the word Kama is used for pure love, because it is as intense as lust. Because we all have experience of what is lust in this world. So love is of the same intensity, but in a, uh, you know, in the direction of serving the Lord. Passion to serve the Lord passion to be selfless and uh, uh, lust means the passion to enjoy oneself. Hmm. So therefore some, you find in the Srimad Bhagavatam sometimes for the word love the karma is used because the intensity is same. One is upward vector, one is downward vector, one is degrading, one is elevating. Hmm. But Kubja is called Kama Praya. Kama Praya means she had actually a tinge of lust hmm, in approaching the beautiful form of Krishna. Whereas the gopis are said to be completely free from lust. So in the uh, Bhaktar Samrat Sindhu, this differentiation is made between gopis and kubja, which means the gopis' purity is assured there. Huh? Mm, unlike kubja, who had a little materialistic mentality of enjoying Krishna. Hmm? And that also got purified. Uh, when he, uh, when, when Krishna went to kubja's place, kubja took his two lotus feet and kept on her chest, immediately she became completely evaporated of the lust. She exactly became like the gopis, purified. So in this way you will find <coughs> that uh, the associates of Krishna, gopis, they are pure and Krishna is supremely pure. It is a dance between the pure and the supreme pure. Read. The gopis associates, the gopi associates of Krishna who assembled from different groups. Most of the gopis were eternal com companions of Krishna. As stated in the Brahma Samhita, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Abhi. In the spiritual world, the associates of Krishna, especially the gopis, are manifestations of the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. They are expansions of Srimati Radharani. But when Krishna exhibits his transcendental pa pastimes within the material world in some of the universes, not only the eternal associates of Krishna come 
but also those who are being promoted to that status from this material world. If they had been bound by fruitive action, they were fully freed from the reactions of karma by constant meditation on Krishna. Yeah. So you can read uh, 10.29.9. There is a very elaborate purport there. Uh, like there were uh, pure gopis from the spiritual world who came along with Radharani as associates. They are called Kaya Vyuha gopis. Some of them are Radha Sneha Dikasakis, Krishna Sneha Dikasakis, Prana Sakis, Nitya Sakis, Parama Preshta Sakis, like that. Uh, like in Mayapur, you find the Parama Preshta Sakis, the prominent eight. They are all actually expansions of Radharani directly. They are called Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavitabhi. Hmm? But then there are other gopis who are jivas, uh, but who are Nitya Siddhas. They are purified. Hmm? Those who are not Nitya Siddhas, they are Devakanyas. They came from the heavenly planets down to join Krishna's pastimes because they were already purified. Now this is the last birth in Vrindavan Dham. Huh? And they will join the pastimes of Krishna and then go back to spiritual world. Hmm? So those gopis actually stayed under the guidance and apprenticeship of the Nitya Siddha gopis living in Vrindavan. Huh? So they, that's all mentioned in Padma Purana in that particular verse 10, 29, 9, which I told you, if you read. Hmm? So, and all the gopis who are allowed entry into the residence were all actually having not even a tinge of lust. They are pure devotees. They are Lakshmis. So, in this way, uh, one can understand the standard of this pastime. Yeah. Krishna reciprocates according to Jiva's desire. Someone wants Krishna as son, someone as friend, someone as lover or husband. When 16,000 princesses were delivered by Krishna from Bhamasu's jail, they wanted Krishna as their husband. And Krishna immediately accepted their request. Yeah, different jivas have different relationship with the Lord. Because he is God, Krishna is God. <clears throat> like you see the cows, they want to be cows to give milk to Krishna. Some are covered boys, they want to play with Krishna. Some of them want to be like gopis or parents of Krishna. Like Yashoda and others. So similarly the gopis, the Bhavamasura's uh, jail um, had 16,000 princesses and they all said we are a rejected lot who will marry us because we were brought by Vamasura nobody will now marry us then Krishna asked what do you want they said you please marry us and Krishna accepted all of them and they all became Dwaraka queens so you can't blame Krishna why did he accept he is God he has no limit why purpose is why only 16,000 he can marry 16 million also and he can maintain already is maintaining he has a track record of maintaining 8.4 million species. So, if somebody is thinking, why Krishna married 16,000? That means they are envious of him. They can't maintain even one properly. Huh? And they, they are envious that he is having 16,000, like the Prabhupada says. <laughs> yeah. Material lust is completely absent in Krishna. That is precisely the reason why perfect celibates for life, like Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya, Shankaracharya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Shukde Goswami, Narada Rishi had devoted their whole existence to cha chanting and hearing the glories of Krishna's Rasa dance. Yeah. So they all have glorified eh? Krishna's Rasa dance. It's not an ordinary pastime. Eh? Shukde Goswami is a Naishtika Brahmachari himself. Why would he talk about a boy and girl relationship if it was mundane? Eh? He would be, that would be the last thing he would be interested in. He is himself in the renounced order. Eh? Same with all these great Acharyas like Madhvacharya, Ramanuja, Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya wrote Gopyashtakam. Hmm. Similarly, uh, you see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, for him, the Gopi's love for Krishna was the main theme that he taught. Hmm. Feelings of separation of Gopi's for Krishna. And Narada became Naradi Gopi to enter into the Rasa dance, learn about it and then he wrote the Narada Bhakti Sutra after that. So, one should uh, uh, take the pastime of Rasa dance to be pure based on the strength of these great Acharyas. One should ask oneself, am I greater than these Acharyas? I know better than them. Uh, or, they are all great souls, they had millions of followers. We can faithfully follow them. Uh, yeah. Shukde Goswami uses two specific words, Bhaktim and Param. Bhaktim Param means execution of devotional service above the neophyte stage. Those who are simply attracted to temple worship but do not know the philosophy of bhakti are in the neophyte stage. That sort of bhakti is not the perfectional stage. 
the perfectional stage of bhakti or devotional service is completely free from material contamination the most dangerous aspect of contamination is lust or sex life bhaktim param devotional service is so potent that the more one advances in this line the more he loses his attraction for material life one who is actually deriving benefit from hearing the rasa leela dance surely achieves the transcendental position he surely loses all traces of lust in his heart ah like look at this picture of the gopis huh? they are all uh, searching for krishna in the forest so when one looks at these gopis one should think that these gopis are top most devotees huh? they have done in millions of lives karma karma yoga gnana yoga ashtanga yoga huh? and bhakti yoga also huh? and they have attained shantras dasyaras sakyaras huh? pachaleras like that now they have come to the madhurya rasa stage uh, they are the superlative devotees of the supreme lord hmm? nobody can match their devotion hmm? nobody can parallel the devotion hmm? in fact the uddhava who was a student of uh, uh, brahaspati huh? there is a beautiful verse in the shrimad bhagavatam brishneenam hmm? pravaro mantri krishnasya daita sakha शिष्यो बृहस्पते साक्षात उद्धवो बुद्धि सत्तम सी द क्वालिफिकेशन ऑफ उद्धव इट्स एज वृष्णी नाम प्रवरो मंत्री अमंगस्ट ऑल द मिनिस्टर्स इन अमंगस्ट यदूस ही वॉज द चीफ नो बड़ी कुड मैच हिस् अडवाइस सो मच सो इवन कृष्णा सॉट अडवाइस फ्रॉम उद्धव ऑलसो वृष्णी नाम प्रवरो मंत्री एंड कृष्ण से दयित सका इज द मोस्ट इंटिमेट असोसिएट ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण and then uh, he was a cousin of krishna also huh? and uh, shishya brihaspati sakshat he was a shishya of brihaspati the guru of the demigods mm-hmm. and uddhavo buddhi sattamah his intelligence knew no limits huh? deeply learned in uh, the scriptures mm-hmm. and krishna sent uddhava to vrindavan to learn from the gopis of vrindavan what is perfect vraj uh, bhakti mm-hmm. and uddhava wanted to become a grass in vrindavan so gopis can walk over his head and put their dust so that he can uh, achieve spontaneous love for krishna so about that spontaneous love i am going to uh, talk to you just now few minutes about this same picture which you are seeing here the gopi is going in search of krishna in the forest of raj so it's chapter number 30 in the 10th canto Gopi search for Krishna. Here it is said the Gopis, when Lord Krishna in the Rasa dance suddenly disappeared. How the Gopis behaved by studying their behavior, we can get a clue of their devotion to Krishna. Here there are two words used here. Achakshana, achakshana ha, achakshana means they could not see Krishna, which means apashyanta ha. They could not suddenly see Krishna. Why Krishna disappeared? Mm, from the rasa dance mm. what happened mm. so their hearts became overwhelmed mm. and uh, overwhelmed with what of krishna uh, he smiles mm. his uh, glances and sweet talks mm. these things were completely occupying their hearts mm. so pra- pra- here the purport uh, there is a word used called sanchari bhava sanchari bhav uh, which is called uh, unmad adivya unmad divine madness see in this divine madness there are three stages there is a lowest stage where one self awareness is there along with that there is some madness uh, for krishna for example prahlad maharaj when he was a small child sometimes he will smile when he sees lord krishna appearing in front of him sometimes he would cry when krishna would uh, disappear uh, at that time a person is uh, self aware he knows that i am a jeeva i am you know i am krishna das uh, and lord is coming and giving me darshan i am grateful to him this kind of feelings are there uh, that is uh, that is one type of uh, unmad uh, but then there is a higher type of uh, 
so this is called weak unmad which i told you now <laughs> prahlad is prahlad unmad is considered as weak unmad you want to know what is strong unmad hmm? actually when once unmad is weak one is externally conscious so now the gopis you will find they will inquire from the trees inquire from the plants from the creepers from deers and animals hmm? so when the unmad is uh, weak uh, the madness is in the very preliminary stage or komala unmad hmm? in that stage one is able to talk to others and cry and search after krishna hmm? like that it is said so prahlad was like that hmm? but then there is strong unmad what happens in that there is some self awareness and then one becomes so unmad so mad in ecstasy one starts imitating krishna's leela hmm. not in a mayavadi sense but in a sense of absorption due to that they imitate for example they would stand like krishna in three fold bending form or they would imitate putna one gopi would become putna another gopi would become krishna so and then she would pretend and uh, that you sucked my life air she would scream and fall on the ground <laughs> they would imitate such past times or one gopi would become trinavarat and catch another gopi and trying to take her and run away from there huh? they would imitate so these are imitating past times this is a second stage of unmad hmm? where some self awareness is little bit there also along with it they imitate the past times hmm? and in the third stage of unmad strong unmad hmm? there there is no self awareness gopis would completely forget about their existence only wherever they see they see only krishna krishna's past time they, there is imitation of krishna's past time also in the third stage also and they even claim i am krishna but that doesn't mean they become krishna or something or maya vadi sense no they will behave uh, they will walk like krishna they would laugh like krishna they would speak like krishna they play on flute like krishna majestically actually in order for us to understand it sometimes you go to a movie and watch a movie and uh, some hero or a heroine becomes your favorite after that you will see when people come back from the movie they become so mad after that hero or heroine they imitate what the hero did or the heroine did you know they while telling their friends they will act out how the hero acted so there are uh people who become fans of a hero or heroine and sometimes they watch the same movie you know 100 times there are people like that and uh, as they keep watching 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 the hero or heroine enters the head um, so deeply that they copy huh? they imitate the behavior and speech and some people remember the whole dialogue <laughs> of the whole movie from beginning to end <laughs> isn't it exactly they will say first uh, scene second scene third scene and everything so all of you know that what i am talking about in the same manner now that is useless because you know if you become mad after a hero or heroine they are like a little demigod in this world you know their bodies are finished our bodies are finished they are rotating in cycle of birth and we are rotating what is the use of that attraction whereas here the gopis are attraction for the lord who is adokshaja or the lord who is rishikesha he is the whole and we are all parts of the lord tiny children tiny part and parcels when the part and parcel develops such attraction for the whole and the supreme lord becomes the hero for us <clears throat> how fortunate one is that one is able to um, develop attraction for the adokshaj lord who is beyond the range of senses and uh, to have attraction for him and to love his past times love his qualities and behaviors and uh, in an, in uh, divya unmad you know imitating those past times that's what the gopis did they were uh, <clears throat> they had uh, in the beginning uh, weak unmad and became strong unmad and then super strong unmad huh? eventually so in divya unmad also there are stages like this so in the beginning i was telling you apashyantaha they could not see where is my our, their lord krishna suddenly he disappeared so they were very uh, sad so they were remembering him so sanchari bhav of divya unmad which appeared due to this pain of separation and a couple of verses it talks about it first of all it is krishna who is called ramapati the master of beauty and opulence 
uh, he naturally approaches the gopis with the natural movements of his feet. Hmm. But then uh, now suddenly he has disappeared. So they are all feeling uh, very sad and they are, they are now in the mood of searching after him. <clears throat> yeah. So here, the third verse, here it says, yeah, they were all asking, hmm. here it says, as the gopis in the state of separation remembered uh, their ecstatic moments with Krishna, their minds became overwhelmed, akshipta, it is said. Oh mind, what are you doing here, sitting? Uh, get up, go out again. And look for the Lord of your life. Like that, they were telling to themselves, they were chastising their own mind. And they all got up like this, you are seeing, they are all walking. They are all searching. And then gradually they rose to the platform of Unmad, as I told you, madness. And the gopis' minds became totally tadatmika, we call it, absorbed in Krishna. So at that time, ta ta vicheshta jagruhu, it is said, they imitated the pastimes of Krishna, Tata, uh, Vicheshta, means activities of Krishna, Jagruhu, they imitated that. So the third verse here says, Gatismita Prekshana Bhashana Adishu Priya Priyasya Pratirudha Murtaya Asavaham Tu Iti Abala Tadatmika Nyavedishu Krishna Vihara Vibramaha. It says, here he says, what is the Vibrama? He says, when the mind fails to function due to the Shingar Ras or Madhuri Ras, and it's called Vibrama, which means uh, the mind is carried away by Krishna. That's called Vibrama stage. Hmm? It is said, so they were all thinking of their beloved Krishna, they were imitating the way of his moving, smiling, his speech, uh, in uh, deeply immersed in uh, Divya Unmar. That's what is explained here. Hmm? So, this is actually the mature state of the gopi's condition of Unmad, he is saying. First, the actions of Krishna entered their senses and their mind and then their bodies and then the actions and qualities of Krishna. Like that he says. So, Priya Priyasya, it is said, which means it was not like Mayavad sense that they became Krishna or something. No, Priya Priyasya means like a lover and the beloved. That affect that type of relationship they had. Like sometimes a uh, beloved may imitate the lover. Mm. Like sometimes even you all have experience at home, we sometimes joke about the father or mother by imitating their speech. Mm. Like sometimes the mother taunts the son. Yeah. And later on the son and mother are in a very jolly mood. You know, small kid will imitate the mother. Mom, you said I am not getting first rank, here is the first rank. And the mother will uh, be so jolly to see that. And the son will imitate the mother. Mom, you how you taunted me? Huh? And then he will copy the mother, huh? shouting like the mother. Huh? So they will have a good laughter, isn't it? So in uh, in home we do it for the mother or father or brother or sister, copying their behavior. Huh? So that is done out of love actually. Huh? Priya, as it says here, Priya Priyasya, it says. It is done out of love. It is not in the Maya by the sense that you became them or something. Huh? It's not like that. Yeah. So, because of their intense uh, remembrance of the Lord or uh, uh, affection for Krishna, uh, they actually copied his uh, uh, pastimes, behavior in Vrindavan, uh, what all, how he does. Because when Krishna is away in the forest of Raj, at that time gopis would uh, talk amongst themselves. Hmm? Now he must be playing with his friends like this. Now he'll be enjoying in Jula. Huh? Now they'll be eating their lunch now. Now they'll be coming from the forest back. Huh? So, in this way, all the activities will be going on uh, in the discussions of the gopis. Yeah. And then here he says, so they started searching for Krishna. And uh, actually, uh, Krishna is uh, as the pervading inside and outside of all living entities like the sky, which is Antaram Bahir Bhuteshu. So, he was aware of the gopi's situation, huh? because he is there in the heart of everybody as Antaryami, super soul. Huh? 
So he is watching their attitude. This is what is most important for us. Eh? Actually, we all are doing our devotional service. What are we feeling inside our heart? Eh? And those feelings are observed by the Lord in our heart. He eh? is seeing that how is this person executing his devotional service? Eh? You know, we have got a guru, we have got the scriptures, uh, and we have sadhus. Eh? We have the, the path of regulative principles laid down. So if Krishna says sincerity, then he will bestow his mercy. Then we can advance. So here he is seeing the gopis uh, uh, love for him and searching for him. He is laughing, he is smiling. He is thinking, let, let them find me out. So he is watching from the heart. So when the gopis were asking many questions to different plants and trees, Krishna was also hearing it. So just see how funny it is and how amazing it is by... By hearing what I am going to share with you from this chapter today, our uh, our uh, uh, affection for Krishna on one hand and our respect for the gopis will increase. See, the gopis are telling to Ashwatha tree, Plaksha, Nyagroda, uh, they are telling these trees. Nanda Sunur Gato Hritva Prema Hasava Lokanaihi. They are saying, Oh trees, that son of Nanda Maharaj had gone away uh, after stealing our minds along with his beautiful smiles and glances. Did you see? They are asking. So you will find, they are posing nine questions about Krishna's whereabouts. In verses 5 through 15 in this chapter. Which means in 10 verses, how many questions? Nine questions they are asking in this 10, 10 verses. So they are saying that because the Plaksha and Ashwatha and other trees are so tall, because they are <laughs> so tall, even if Krishna went far away, they would have seen easily. Correct, no? So, they can easily give us the information. So, they are asking. But then the Plaksha, uh, Plaksha tree is actually Pilu tree. And the Nyagroda means a Banyan tree. So, they are saying that the Banyan tree and Pilu tree are very tall. They will surely know everything happening for several kilometers in that area. But then the, they are fearing that the trees may ask, Hey, gopis, why are you asking me? The trees may ask, you know. Then the gopis already told them. See, though Krishna is the son of Payas Nanda Maharaj, he has stolen the hearts of all of us and he has run away. Hmm. Not only that, he has sent his servants as thieves in the form of his sweet smiles and glances along with the special, uh, you know, bewildering prema, hmm. which maddens everybody. So they are calling those three as thieves. <laughs> Krishna's smile, his glance and his prema for gopis, they are calling it as thieves. So, those thieves have stolen our minds and hearts away. And he has gone away, they are saying. And then they are saying that, uh, uh, so therefore we are searching for him. Oh trees, please don't hide the truth. Please tell us. And then the trees, uh, the, both the trees, like you know, banyan tree and uh, you know, the pilu tree, they are just standing silent. Now the gopis are giving a comment now. They are saying, just see these trees, they are useless. They are so proud that they simply ignore us, refusing to give any answer. Uh, actually, we have heard, we have had enough of these trees. They have only meager fruits hmm, and are ignorant of their religious duty of helping others. Uh, that means, you know, any religious person should help others. Uh, isn't it? No, you won't be able to. This is Sarartha Darshini commentary. This is the 10th canto, 30th chapter, purports. So, they are saying that, you you know, these trees are not uh, pious because pious people always should be helpful to others. Uh, they are not helping me. Uh, helping us, they are saying. And then they are saying, their buds aren't blossoming. These two trees, you know, pilu tree and banyan tree have small buds and small fruits. So they are not uh, having a blossomed heart. Mm. So they don't, uh, they are not in the mood to help us, they are saying. They are, their hearts are impure. So the Gopi said, better leave these fellows. They may be very tall, they may know the truth, but they are not open-minded. Uh, Sometimes people uh, speak to you in a very official way, no? you know. Uh, Good morning. They give a big smile also, but in the heart they don't mean it. Uh, Sometimes they actually have some other intention. Similarly, they felt that these trees are useless, you know, they are not in the mood to help us. So then they went ahead. They are saying, Kachit Kurabaka Shoka 
नाग पुन्नाग चंपका रामानुजो मानिनी मानिनी इतो दर्प हरस्मित then they went to a flower garden huh? there the gopis thought ah this here is a good place better ask these trees who have pure hearts and they are graciously honoring their guests bees honey bees are being welcomed in this garden and they are sitting in the flowers and drinking honey so it seems to be a very welcoming place hmm? uh, they are giving them honey so the gopis approached the, the kurubaka uh, kurubaka tree which means um, um, amaranth they call it this tree yeah? uh, which has a red and unfading flowers naga means naga kesara hmm? they are approaching these trees and asking you know they are asking that where has krishna gone where is he hiding hmm? uh, and then they are telling the tree you may ask why are we asking this question because his smile has uh, stolen our pride huh? they are saying now hmm? our false pride is finished now uh, what was our pride we thought that you know krishna is dancing only with me hmm? and now suddenly he, he has disappeared now all of us have Uh, been left behind like orphans huh? and uh, our pride is now destroyed dismantled now so please tell us where he is so we will go and tell him we will never become proud huh? accept us so at that time these trees this uh, kurubaka tree and <laughs> nagakeshar tree they moved the branch like this huh? and they moved the branch like this immediately see what the uh, gopis are uh, thinking hey they are shaking the head saying they don't know Uh, what is the use of these hard-hearted males? They said, because both the trees they have met till now are males. So they said that the males are very hard-hearted. So there is a very indirect meaning in this. The meaning is, Krishna is also a supreme purusha. He is very hard-hearted. He has rejected us, ignored us. Similarly, these two trees are also grand sized trees, and they are also hard-hearted like that. They said, and then they said, "Kachit tulasi kalyani." गोविंद चरण प्रिय सहत्वाकुलाइर्बिभ्रदृष्टस्ते अति प्रियोच्युत ए तुसी महाराणी दे आर मीटिंग तुसी नाउ तुसी प्लांट्स यु आर अच्युत प्रिय यु आर वेरी वेरी डियर टू लॉर्ड कृष्ण कचि तुसी कल्याण यु आर ऑलवेज डेकोरेटिंग द लोटस फीट ऑफ कृष्ण गोविंद चरण प्रिय बिकॉज यू आल हेव सीन इन कृष्ण लोटस फीट दर इज तुसी In Lord Vishnu's lotus feet, also tulasi. The tulasi leaf only, uh, the fragrance of it only attracted Kumaras to become devotees. Hmm. So they are thinking now we will get the answer because tulasi Maharani is a female, and she will be soft natured. Only uh, only a yeah, woman can understand the heart of another woman. So she will give us. So they are going and asking. Hmm. And then they are saying that uh, oh tulasi. कचित तुसी कल्याण गोविंद चरण प्रिय यू आर वेरी फॉर्चुनेट बीइंग वेरी डियर टू लॉर्ड गोविंद बिकॉज यू आर गोविंद चरण प्रिय बट व्हाट अबाउट अस वी आर वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट व्हाई बिकॉज कृष्ण हैज लेफ्ट अस आई लाइक दैट दे टोल्ड एंड देन दे एक्सपेक्टेड दैट हे गोपीज डोंट से दैट यू आर आल्सो वेरी डियर टू लॉर्ड गोविंद अस लॉट ऑफ स्वीट लाइक दैट तुलसी मे से दे सेड यस अस दैट इज ट्रू बट यू आर मोर फॉर्चुनेट देन अस व्हाई because you have additional attractive quality of never now actually when uh, uh, yeah you have a additional advantage what is it krishna always makes tulasi garlands and wears in his neck hmm? and uh, the bumblebees are always coming and humming in the in that tulasi garland they are saying hmm? so this really proves that your fortune is far greater than as they are saying hmm? encircled by the swarm of bees and krishna carries you uh, and uh, that means you know you are never separated from krishna always and uh, you see krishna is fond of uh, such a fine fragrances which you have tulasi tulasi has its own fra- her own fragrance but we don't have such fragrance like you and we are ignored by him and he disappeared like that they are saying and then they they saw that Tulasi is not saying anything. Huh? Now they are talking among themselves. Ah, this Tulasi is intoxicated by pride and her good fortune, so she will not even look at us. Huh? Okay, now let's go and ask the fragrant Malati. Hmm? Malati is actually jasmine flower, hmm? and uh, they are saying that who are all co-wives of Tulasi. Huh? <laughs> they are saying that you know 
Tulasi may not give answer, but Malati will give us. Hmm? So the gopis went off in another direction. Hmm? And then they are they are asking Malati flower, you know, did Krishna pick up you flowers, Malati flowers? Hmm? You know, you are now blooming fully, even in the rainy and autumn season. There are two varieties of Malati flowers. One is called Jati, another is called Malati. Hmm? Both are jasmine actually, both uh, species of jasmine flowers. Hmm? So one blossoms in rainy season, another one in fall. Huh? So they are saying that you are all blo blooming. Definitely you must have seen Krishna. Definitely Krishna must have plucked some of your flowers. So you seem to be in a very jubilant mood. Like that they are saying. Hmm? And then when they asked, the jasmine plant kept mum. Huh? Then the gopis were saying, just see, these jasmines are afraid of Krishna. Huh? And their co-wife Tulasi, because Tulasi may report to Krishna that Jasmine uh, Malati flower plant was the one which released the truth about him. So they don't want to say. What is the use we have with them? Uh, because these Jasmine, you know, they are not confident to tell us the truth. They are dependent on Tulasi's approval. Huh? Useless, they said. <laughs> Sometimes, even among some mild nature devotees, you find you ask them, tell me what is the problem, who told what, why are you crying or whatever. They will not say the truth because they are timid and they are afraid. So they considered Malati flowers to be like that, timid. They are not releasing the truth about Krishna because Tulasi will complain about them. So then they thought, useless it is. Okay, let us go to the other trees. Just see this mango and piala tree is standing motionless on the bank of Yamuna. I think they must be meditating on Vishnu. So surely they will not lie to us huh? because they thought all these Krishna's devotees are crooked. None of them are giving us the truth. <laughs> Either they are keeping mum or they are hard-hearted or they are proud huh? or they are timid. Huh? Different reasons they said. And now they said, now at least this mango tree, they said, huh? in the bank of Yamuna is worshipper of Vishnu. Huh? So they must be more truthful and simple and very straightforward Vishnu devotees. Huh? So let us ask him. Uh, oh, mango creeper. Oh, amra. Mango tree. Oh, nipa. Nipa is actually uh, kadamba with large flowers. Uh, and oh, kadamba. That is kadamba with smaller flowers. Uh, but very sweet fr fragrance. Oh, piala. Means shal tree. Shal tree, we call it. Oh, asana. Which is yellow shal tree. Oh, coconut. Oh, betel nut tree. Oh, arka. We gopis have lost our minds. Please tell us where Krishna has gone. Even though the Arka plant is very insignificant, it always grows near the Gopishwar Mahadev. So, they said, see, Gopishwar Mahadev is actually very merciful now. So, they thought that now we are going to get the answer from this. So, the trees may ask them, why are you asking us this question? So, the Gopi said, because you are living on the bank of Yamuna just to benefit others, Parartha. Huh? You are living for Parartha Ekanta Jivitan. You are living for others' benefit. So, please tell us. So, and then the trees kept mum, quiet. So one gopi said, perhaps the trees and plants did not hear our question because they were in trance, meditating on Vishnu, they were saying. So, so now some gopis said, hey, these are very hard-hearted trees. Even though they are living in a holy place, just see how merciless they are. Another gopi said, hey, don't say like that. Why should we unnecessarily criticize the residents in a holy place? First of all, they are residents in a holy place. Eh? Plus, they are also meditating on Vishnu. Why should we criticize meditating people? It's not proper for us. You know? Another copy was saying like that. Okay, if they are absorbed in trance and they are not telling us the answer, let's go to someone else. And they were saying. Yeah, and then, then they, one copy said, Aha, I have found a, a way now, they, she said. She, then she pointed to the earth, she said, no need to ask anybody. Here is one person who is always in touch with Krishna. Whether Krishna is in Vrindavan, Krishna is in Mathura, Krishna is in Dwaraka, the earth is always in touch. She is the most fortunate. In fact, when Lord came as Varaha, she got the embrace of Varaha when Varaha carried, uh, you know, earth on his tusks. So, they said she is very intimate associate of the Lord and she is going to tell us right now, they, she exactly knows where are Krishna's lotus feet now? Huh? Because Krishna's lotus feet has 19 symbols huh? and they are all imprinted on the earth when he walks. Huh? So she will very easily know 
and then they started uh, talking about that um, and they and they also said that uh, you know um, like uh, they they asked the earth oh earth what austerities did you perform they said uh, let us not uh, ask her about krishna directly first let us praise her huh? little bit appreciate her and then she may become friendly and she may release what austerities did you perform earth oh bhumi huh? by which you are shining with so much bliss from the touch of krishna's lotus feet your hairs are standing on end in the form of trees and plants erect huh? because of the ecstasy you are feeling the, and the reason for your ecstasy is krishna's uh, lotus feet touch huh? so please kindly tell us huh? so they are saying in fact even when lord came as vamana he put his foot on you and then he grew in, into very big size you accepted his lotus feet you are known for your strength and tolerance you are known for being so kind to accommodate all the living entities the children of the lord in on you please kindly tell us they asked so at the time earth also kept quiet so the gopi said alas how will the earth who is relishing the pressure of uh, krishna's lotus feet hmm, you know with all the symbols hmm, why uh, you know why would she speak to us hmm? she is intoxicated by pride she won't reply to us hmm. like that they said then one gopi saw a doe hmm. doe means a small she deer hmm. she asked oh wife of deer has krishna come close to you hmm. you are wife of deer and uh, you are very dear to krishna and krishna is very dear to you also so you are feeling a lot of bliss in your eyes huh? you are seeing that nirvrutim means anandam you are feeling uh, great paramanandam you see that so maybe krishna with his beauty of his face and hands and uh, limbs and smile has attracted you and he passed and then you are also aware then the doe started walking ahead huh? then the gopi is uh, one gopi said hey the doe is walking and showing us the way let us just go behind the doe huh then they walked behind the doe huh? but after some time the doe disappeared <laughs> it ran fast huh? and the gopis cried and said alas the doe was giving us a direction we couldn't find now where he went like that they said yeah in this way and then another gopi said actually the doe ran away why because if he reveals the presence of krishna uh, somebody others may question therefore he didn't want to reveal so go, and he didn't want to say no to us so he disappeared from here like that they were saying hmm. yeah so in this way as they were proceeding ahead they they saw a fragrance coming huh? they said oh this fragrance must be coming from krishna's garland huh? Huh? and also from the kumkuma that some uh, Uh, gopi must be uh, wearing on her body huh? so the fragrance is coming where is it coming it seems that krishna has given up all of us and they have uh, he has taken one of the gopis huh? and uh, gone ahead so now let us find out where is this fragrance coming from huh? and then so they asked many trees huh? uh, so in as it goes on i will come to now that is the point where that unmad goes to the stage where it says start acting out leelas which i told you hmm. that is mentioned in the 14th verse onwards in many many killing of the asuras like you know what yogamaya would do when the gopis would act as krishna and yogamaya will come and support them by becoming putna hmm, for them so she would act the role of demon and the gopis would act the role of krishna hmm. like that it was going on for a while i'm not reading everything so krishna oham paschata gatim it is said the krishna oham i am krishna i will become uh, krishna and kill putna or kill lagasura kill bakasura like that the gopis are imitating the past times so go away from here you wicked snake they would tell so one gopi will tell another gopi <laughs> like that this is their imitating so it goes on like this and i'm going ahead now अनयाराधि नून भगवान्हरीश्वर यो विहाय गोविंद प्रीतो याम अनयत रह सो दिस इज अ वेरी फेमस वर्स बाय द गोपीज देर सेइंग अनया आराधि नून हे सम वन गोपी हैज वर्शिप्ड हिम वेरी वेल सो भगवान्हरीश्वर 
and uh, here they are saying that uh, so this part i will discuss tomorrow i mean the next class why because from here starts radharani uh, till now we have seen the exalted position of the gopis uh, today uh, and then in, uh, in the next class we will talk about the exalted position of shrimati radharani and then this kanta prem will become understandable little more uh, better but it is a very exalted subject uh, if we feel little appreciation for what we read uh, so we can consider ourselves very fortunate because rachaitanya mahaprabhu nitanand prabhu and all the acharyas are mercifully revealing the uh, iota of understanding of krishna and the gopis and uh, if we can uh, make our hearts and minds simple and not become afflicted by lust while reading these past times then tomorrow i will also in the next class i will also tell about uh, uh, checking our own adhikar to uh, read these past times i will talk about the adhikar aspect also in the next class shel prabhupar ki gaur bhakta vrinda ki antrashmat bhagavatam ki